rabbit here. So I thought we'd put some extra storage on this unit that we're building. And um, I kind of found some extra hard drives that were left over from builds and um, uh, upgrades that I've been making. So um, we got some half terabyte, um, two and a half inch drives. But these are slow, these are 5400 RPM drives. So I thought we could try and make a RAID configuration out of these, RAID 0. And um, then I have a half a terabyte 7200 RPM drive, because this is fast so I can have it stand alone. And I actually found uh, hanging around a half a terabyte SSD also, so we'll add that one. And to be able to connect these, these use the um, quite common SATA connection. And on each of these hard drives, independent of the type, you have two connectors. One there and one there. And one of the connectors is for data, and the other connector is for power. And the cable for the power usually is connected directly to the power supply, and then you have you know, like several of the connectors available for the power. As you see, it only has some um, five leads, so I never really understood why they, in the south of design, why they made that um, has so many um, pins on it or conductors on it. So, and then there's a, a little edge there that you have to put in the right way to plug it in. So it can't be plugged in the wrong way around. So, I'll plug it in like that. And then for the data cable, basically you have um, different lengths, different colors. Often they come a couple with the motherboard. And then um, you have a, a 90 connector and then a straight connector. And then also this like. Yeah, and then you can also have cables that are like direct, direct. So a little bit depends on what, how your installation looks or what type of cables you need. But usually the ones that are provided with the um, motherboards are um, are of this type where they have the 90 volts and the straight. Oh, and then that plugs in there. So anyway, let's see, um, on the computer side, you basically you have the um, connectors for the data um, to come in. And then you can, um, use in your motherboard manual, you have a, a diagram of the connectors. And then it shows you the, where the SATA connectors are. It can be in a group, or they can be distributed in several locations, it varies. Now the most important thing to remember is that um, these connectors are usually grouped into groups and um, each grouping of SATA connectors go to possibly one or more um, SATA controllers and each SATA controller has the possibility to support different types of speeds and different RAID configurations so not all the um, connectors are born equal one can say so one has to look at the manual for the, or have the manual for the motherboard to, if you want to be able to set up a RAID configuration or it's important for you to what speed the Ford has them. Um, yeah. Plus the thing is that then also which is quite common is that like, the, like this red nice sticker on this motherboard indicates that one of the ports gets used if you have onboard um, uh, hard drives like a uh, M.2 drive or an onboard SATA hard drive like I have here on this motherboard so then you can't use a specific port so that also you have to look up in the manual to see um, what's the case because if you try and use this port when you have a, an onboard um, hard drive or in use then um, yeah you'll get a data conflict and it won't work so anyway let's have a look at um, where we're going to put these hard drives so anyway, this is the back side of the case, and then you have, um, I was thinking of putting the, the hard drives that I'm going to drive in RAID configuration on, onto these two plates, and then it has these hard drive chassis, so I'm just going to 
put um, put these on there. I don't know which way around yet. Presumably so that the connectors are are forward. That might actually be easier than having them going backwards. So I'm going to have to see which solution I will use. So let's get to work. So, took this panel off, and I'm trying to figure out what cable combination will work. So I think I can't use that on this one, so they're going to go there, so I'm going to have to try and share. So, and that's quite flat on that one, and then that comes out there, I'm hoping I'll be able to Bend it down and the back cover will still go on because I need the the straight part to go into where the um, connectors are on the motherboard. Because I'm not sure I can use the 90 band on the, on the motherboard side. So I need to have the flexibility to slot this in wherever. So anyway, let's get that screwed on. And then a little bit of a comment on the screws. You get this collection of screws. And then you actually have to be careful you get the you use the screws the, the correct thread and the correct length of course for hard drive use. Because there's two screws that look pretty much the same. And pretty much the same size. Which is a bit annoying because and the the one screw the one type of screw is for the um, motherboard to screw the motherboard in, and then there's another type of screw to uh, screw hard drives in. So let's see if we can find that. That is probably one of these. Okay, let's And if you don't have good eyesight like I, then uh, you will mix them up. And they're a little bit more coarse threaded, if I remember. So I recommend testing on the hard drive. Ah, uh, that doesn't want to go in there. Test one of these. Don't force the screw. It has to screw in very nicely. Okay, so that's the type of screw we need. At least for these these two hard drives. Not that one. So anyway, I will dig out more of these. Uh, these screws of the oh, it's so hard to see. Not that size and then with the finer. Thread. I don't know if I introduced this is chip. So he's responsible for quality assurance. Or actually it's responsible for losing screws on the floor. And flapping around. <laughs> now you seem to be calm. So I don't want you to be too violent with these screws. So I think it'll be okay with, with actually having three. And I've already pre-installed the connector, so I'll put them on. Okay, now I've to. So it's supposed to slot in there and slot in there. And then it has to support the screw. Let's see if I can put that one. I hope there's enough clearance for the cover. Wow! Check and come off. I better put the screw in before I do anything. Okay. 
really hard to see if that is not going to take on the plate. But I think that'll be okay. It's not the most optimal solution. Just that I actually don't have um, any more. I mean, I could you be good if I had more SATA cables, but I actually only have these right now. Oh, it's not good. So, that's the first one. As I said, this power is going to then come over here and slot in there and then go to the power supply, I hope. So, I'm going to do the second one the same way. Uh, hard to decide. I think these went in like that. I think I might want... Cables coming out the front end. Definitely. Yeah. No, not taking screws. You could put that in your throat. Let go of. No, you took one of my screws. No, what are you doing? You took one of my screws. What are you gonna do now? But don't eat screws. See that? That's dangerous. Something like this. Oh, screw this one on. Go and try and find the screw. I think he thinks they're nuts. screws for hard drive since they're just flat. Yeah, I think that's solid enough. Okay, so that will be let's see now. So anyway, that's how it looks screwed on there. And put this on the top or the bottom. Some of them actually do have you know, extra locking mechanisms also. Not all of them. Oh. 
notch is down. Oh, is this going to be long enough? Oh, it'll be so sad if it's not long enough. So sad. Because I don't think this is going to be long enough now. Hey! You really need to stop that. They're my screws, not yours. You might choke on them. Not good. Now uh, you see, I'd like it to come over and go on to that connector. But that is obviously not going to really work. So, anyway, that's maybe not the best. But I was able to root. I swapped around the power cables and I was able to get them into, into the slot where they belong. With the, um, so those are the two control cables for that and these here and now we need to root them into the front plug them into the motherboard so right so uh, before we turn it around we actually have to pass these cables through actually don't need the full length on the other sides Away some of it down there. Something like that. Now to open these up. And Chip got fed up with me, flew off with another family member. Thought I was being boring. Something like that. in when we use the cover. Oh. Well, on this side of the operation. And um, here we can we will take the ones that are going to make so I want to avoid connecting into that connector just there because that's used by the onboard onboard hard drive oh come on I'm just gonna have to break the cable So, I'm going to take the two black ones and I'm going to populate this connector because according to the manual 
this connector and the controller connected to it supports RAID, so I can put the two black ones in there, and the rest of them I will connect into the middle one here. So I'll just get that done. So now that I connected them, I decided to do one small change. So the RAID configuration will be on this first connector. On the second connector, I'll put only one of the other hard drives because one of them's already been used by the onboard um, drive, and then I'll put the the other hard drive here on this group here. So this has quite a lot of control. I think this has three different solid controllers on this board, <laughs> so I can actually distribute distribute the load. Okay, so now I will um, get ready to power it up, and then we will. Uh, See if we see if the machine starts still after all that fiddling, and then see if we actually have the drives. Yeah, the monitor's not um, wanting to work. It's it does this. This is actually a suspect monitor, so it does that. It, like the on-off button doesn't really react the way it's supposed to. The screen blank, and then suddenly it, broop, it starts working again. So I'm going to try and get it to work. <laughs> Wish me luck. So I anyway, have to put in some cell phone footage because there's no way I can actually. Not really easy to get the um, camera to get onto the bus. So I had to use another monitor. The monitor I was trying to use is kaput. So anyway, here's the main thing. But and then if we just concentrate on drives, then we go to system, auto port information. And here we have a problem. Here we should see two Western Digitals 500 gigs. We don't. We see some kind of like it's not recognizing or something here. And then that's empty. And then here's one of the drives. And then it's empty. And then there's the Kingston. This is the onboard one on the port 5. So if we say one, two, three. So there's one hard drive missing. And then if we look at the port layout. And we can see that we have two cellar ports there, four there, that would be the six. But then this something that is called G SATA. Those don't seem to be included at all, not accessible in the in, in the um, BIOS. So I'm just gonna have to have a look at and see what I can find. Yep, I think I found it. Oh no, I came back again. Oh, that is weird. No, it's showing it on zero gigabits. It's this drive. It seems to be a bit um, unstable. Because it varies between not being detected at all to giving this weird zero gigabyte thing, and it makes a lot of. It made a lot of noise. Let's see if I. <laughs> oh my. I think I think this one is is actually dead. Yeah, now it disappeared completely. So now when we go into the BIOS, get the auto port information, and then you see the port. It should be on port zero, so that's empty now. Hmm. Okay. So I need to take that one out. That's not going to be usable. So my RAID idea is temporarily a little bit suspended. We'll see what I can think up. And then I think that this um, uh, G SATA is actually, um, it's a, it seems to be a faster interface on its own controller chip, but um, it's software supported only, so uh, you would need to have an OS, so it's not supported from the BIOS, at least as far as I can see. So. <laughs> Okay, not a very good idea, but I replaced them with, um, I had actually some scrap 5400 RPM, 2005, 250 gig drives. 
and now I've got two of those in play. The good news is that now we have all the drives reported as boot drives, including this is the one that's on the uh, motherboard and then the extra four hard drives. So that's good. And now the capacities are reported correctly, so we have the two 250 gigs, then the Samsung, uh, that's uh, the um, SSD drive, and then there's a nice standard half terabyte hard drive, and then there's the Kingston um, SSD also. Well, I just enabled the SATA mode selection to RAID and let's see what we can do with the configuration to tell you when we boot it. So, let's see if we can wobble our way through here. So, to create a volume, volume zero, can I, can I stripe it? Okay, select discs. We just want to take okay, space. Nothing about most drives. So, look, now we have the RAID configuration, so these should be connected together for speed. And then we have the other drives down below. Okay. Yep. So, and then it's just not So, now we. Um, have it all working. It turns out that monitor is actually done, so I have to get. <laughs> I have to get. I was hoping to be able to use it for a little bit longer, but it's, uh, it's, it's now it's going back to its dead state. Um, but anyway, um, so basically the only problem we had was that, um, yeah, there was two problems. Um, this SATA uh, connector seems to be dependent on software so you have to dry, install drivers in the operating system to access it. there's no BIOS, direct BIOS support so these ports are supported in the BIOS and one of them gets eaten up by the onboard um, SSD and um, then we had to swap, sadly swap out those half terabyte 5400 RPM drives to the 250s because, but since I'm using striping the uh, It'll be okay. Just to increase the speed a bit, so it puts the data into. I mean, the only idea I was thinking of reading those the old drives is just to get a bit of, you know, to put them in a configuration where you, um, you know, get better performance even if they're slower drives. So the, what happens is they're definitely not good for data redundancy, or you know, RAID is not a backup, and in this case, isn't definitely not. Because when you write data to that um, volume um, from the operating system, it'll it'll write the data, half of the data on one of the disks and another half of the data on the other disk. And then, of course, if one of the disks fails, then it's it's gone. <laughs> but um, yeah, as I said, this it, uh, I'm thinking of using it as a scratch drive, or the plan is to use it as a scratch drive. So. Um, but as you saw, you can utilize the footer, so it's basically, it's just, like, it lack like a, a, a um, standard half a terabyte drive. Yeah, so, anyway. Hey, so if you liked this video, thought it was worth something, hit the like button. Um, consider subscribing to get more content. If you'd like to support the channel, then uh, you can buy me a cup of coffee or buy some merch. The links are in the description. And all the proceedings going to support the channel, as you see, I need a bit of support. Already down to using used hard drives and stuff. <laughs> I actually like to reuse some of the hardware just to put it to work. And, um, and it's actually a good idea to go through your covers and see if you have old hard drives left that you can actually combine in various ways. And, 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 and I mean, the, the current motherboards are they basically you have a lot of SATA ports so you, you could actually put them in a rated stripe rated configuration and use it as a big scratch disk so it's, a, it's not that bad, bad of an idea and then burn them out when they're completely dead then throw them away 
okay well uh, this is it for now and um see you in the next one